Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. I hope you are all doing very well. Today I have a rather unexpected book haul for you because I don't know about you guys, but these days I need this kind of content on booktube. And because my first rule for my channel is to make the kind of content that I like to watch, then I thought I'd do a book haul just because I felt like it. But this is very last minute. As you know, if you follow the news or watch my vlog earlier this week, we're under lockdown here where I live. And that means that I am currently sequestered here at home. Um, so this morning I was sitting here all by my lonesome, minding my own business, trying to get some work done when the doorbell rings. And I jumped because obviously with the lockdown, I wasn't expecting anybody. I was relieved to find out that it was only the mailman. As it happens, I'd forgotten that a couple of weeks ago I'd ordered a few books online, but what good timing to get a few new books, right? Some of them, as you will see, are quite big, which means that I definitely won't run out of reading material. So I have this little problem that I'm sure a lot of you will sympathize with uh, because I mostly read in English, but I live in Spanish speaking country. I have to buy most of my books online. I actually uh, mostly rely on ebooks and script, but from time to time I order physical books from the book depository because they don't charge any delivery fee, so it's just perfect. The only problem is that sometimes the books I order from them can take up to several weeks to arrive. And that used to annoy me, but then I adjusted my expectations and now I place my order and then I make myself forget about it. That way, it is always a nice surprise when books turn up on my doorstep, as it were. I don't have a doorstep, I live in an apartment. Anyway, this morning, uh, the surprise was even nicer because of the lockdown. So, you know, other than my boyfriend, the mailman was the first person I've seen in days. Um, and it was a weird moment. The mailman was wearing gloves, like medical gloves. And we both made sure to stand at least six feet away from each other. And you know that normally uh, mailmen carry that machine where you sign for your delivery with your finger? Sometimes they have like a little stick or a little, little pen thing. Well, I didn't have to sign. He told me that they're not asking people to sign right now. I don't know if this is the new normal or if things will go back to how they used to be or when that might happen, but it also occurred to me, this is kind of like an optimistic thought, I think. It occurred to me that we would get used to things like this really quickly if we had to. Let me show you all the books I got and tell you why I bought them. So, last year, stay with me, last year I read uh, Death in Venice by Thomas Mann, but I read it as an ebook in Spanish translation. Since then, I have been wanting to read it in English. Um, as you know, obviously, Thomas Mann wrote his books in German. He's a German writer. Uh, but I wanted to read them in English because I can't read in German. And also, I want to read more from him. So, uh, the first book I got is this version of Death in Venice, translated by David Look. This book includes uh, other short stories by Mann apart from Death in Venice, which is actually a novella. It includes, let me tell you, uh, Little Hare Friedman, The Joker, The Road to the Churchyard, Gladius Day, Tristan, and uh, Tonio Kerga, of course, Death in Venice. I don't know anything about all the other stories in this book, uh, but Death in Venice um, is a novella whose protagonist is an aging writing, who uh, an aging writer who suffers from writer's block, and he goes to Venice. Um, while in Venice, he becomes obsessed with a boy he meets while there is an outbreak of cholera in the city. <laughs> so when I read um, Death in Venice last year, I found it so haunting. So I'm really looking forward to reading it again and of course reading the other stories here in this little collection. I also got Buddenbrooks, which is Thomas Mann's first novel published in 1901. This version is translated by Helen Tracy Lowe Porter. The, this novel, The Buddenbrooks, uh, chronicles the decline of a wealthy family from the north of Germany. Apparently Mann was inspired by his own family and that means that many of the characters in the novel are inspired by people in real life. And this is what is known as a roman à clé, 
or a novel with a key. And uh, I guess this is not as fun for us contemporary readers because unless you have for some reason good knowledge of Thomas Mann's family and other important people in the Germany of the late 19th century, the fact that characters stand for real life people means, well, people, really real life people. Real life people are just people, right? Well, that means nothing to us. When Mann wrote this novel, he had only written many short stories, including some published in uh, this volume that I just showed you. Um, I don't think Woodenbrooks uh, could be considered a historical novel because from what I understand, the historical events that happen in the course of the narrative are all relegated to the background. But I don't know, I haven't read it yet. So the next uh, book that I got is The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann, also translated by Helen Tracy Lowe Porter. This is one of the most famous and most critically acclaimed novels in German. It was first published in 1924 and I actually started reading it uh, as an ebook and I've enjoyed what I've read so far. Um, the problem with ebooks, well maybe it's an advantage, is that sometimes I don't know how long a book is. I mean I can see the number of pages on an ebook but if I don't hold the book in my hand it just doesn't sink in how you know, how quite big it is. Um, so, you know, because I already started reading it, I, I'm already on page 108, um, but it's, it's bigger than I thought, but anyway, that's fine. Um, so I look forward to going back to it now that I own my own physical um, copy. And one of the things that attracted me to the Magic Mountain is that I kept uh, reading that some of the humor here or the comic elements in this novel or the tone maybe is similar to Death in Venice. And because I enjoy that so much, I think I would enjoy this. I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, the Magic Mountain takes place in a sanatorium in Switzerland. And that setting works as a microcosm, uh, which allows man to explore the European bourgeoisie. I am sure I'll have a lot to say about the Magic Mountain when I, you know, when I finish reading it. Uh, for sure, but I'm gonna put it down and show you the last book I got which is Dr. Faustus also by Thomas Mann. In this case, it's translated by John E. Woods um, Dr. Faustus was first published in 1947 Okay, it's a German novel from 1947 Right, that's important. It is a retelling of the German legend of uh, Faust or the pact with the devil of course, as you know, there are other famous works of literature which are retellings of uh, Faust. Uh, there's uh, Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus, um, which is a play from the early 17th century. And I saw a production of it uh, once and was surprised by the comic elements in it, which I did not expect. Then there's also the famous play by Goethe, um, the first part, I think, was published in 1808 and the second one in 1832 uh, after Goethe's death. And then, of course, uh, there's the wonderful uh, novel by Mikhail Bulgakov written in the Soviet Union between 1928 and 1940. I read The Master and Margarita last year and made a short video review that, for some reason, is today the most viewed video on my channel. So go check it out if you haven't already. I made it a long time ago, so it's not very polished, but people seem to like it. So there you go. So we go back now to Dr. Uh, Faustus. Here, the version of the German legend, I think it's a medieval German legend. Well, in Dr. Faustus, Thomas Mann sets that legend in 20th century Germany during the rise of the Nazi party. So that already sounds fascinating to me. Um, but again, you know, I don't know because I haven't read it, but I cannot wait to read it. So all these books, this is my book haul here, let me show you. All these books um, are published by Vintage, as you can see in the UK. And I am glad to have my very own small collection of Thomas Mann's uh, 
books. So I'm gonna put them down because they're very heavy. And you know, I, I think I said it on my vlog earlier this week, but I'll say it again. Whatever happens with this confinement and the lockdown situation, one thing is for sure, I am not going to run out of reading material. Now, before I go, I wanna thank everybody everyone really who watched my blog and everyone who left a comment on it and even if you didn't leave a comment thank you um, I want to tell you that I'm still doing fine I'm recording this on Wednesday I'm still doing fine and so is everyone uh, I know um, I'm just taking things uh, one day at the time and keeping a routine uh, nobody knows how long this will go on for, so I think that taking things one day at the time is a healthy approach. I'm still largely staying away from Twitter for my mental health, that's important. I'm still working from home, reading, uh, and making videos for you guys, which is my favorite thing to do right now. I also have an update on my boyfriend because I mentioned his situation on my vlog. So today is his last day at work. He's still at work when I'm shooting this. He'll be back soon. Uh, so he'll be home from now on with me. And I'm, I'm glad because as you can imagine, going to work is not fun for anybody at the moment. I don't know if you guys have to go to work wherever you are uh, in the world, but it's not good. Anyway, going back to books, let me know if you have read any of the books by Thomas Mann that I mentioned in this video, or if you're interested in doing so, and why in the comment section down below. I love to hear from all of you. So also let me know how you're doing with all of this stuff going on and what you're reading. And yeah, that's all from me. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now. <music>